I need my glue. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I am Laurent Macar, and today it's time for another reading around the world update. The idea was that I would do an update every five books, but I have now read, read uh, six, so I'm going to go through them with you. Four of them I've already talked about in previous wrap-ups or whatnot, so I'm going to try to keep it short. Um, and the other two will be kind of new. So we'll start with um, a book that I've read that is set in the African continent, specifically in Kenya, and that is The Wonderful Wizard of the Crow by Ngugi Wationgo. This is a political satire, and Ngugi Wationgo wrote this as a commentary on the political system of his home country, Kenya. And while this is not set in Kenya, it's set in a fictional country called Aburiria, uh, which has a leader that decides on everything that is going to happen. The leader is called The Leader. And this book discusses the whole, that whole situation of his ministers competing with one another, trying to always be on the leader's side, uh, what that means for the country. Uh, there are two characters that kind of represent in the book a contrary force to what the leader does and those become the Wizard of the Crow. People are convinced that the Wizard of the Crow has magical powers that he or she be, uh, can then use to better the people's lives. Um, there isn't a huge plot in this and that's not why you should read the book. The book is wonderful uh, because of the social commentary, because we follow so many different characters and because the book itself is also very hilarious, the absurd things that happen that commentate on uh, the political constructs in Kenya, it's just, it's very well done, it's very well written, it's quite big, but it's absolutely worth it. I highly recommend this book. It's also, I like it when, I mean, this book, oftentimes I read historical fiction to try to get to know a country, and this is different. This is, tries to portray how the country functions, uh, so yeah, really, really good. Then we're going upwards, we're going to Europe, and we are going to start with Hungary, for which I have listened at the book called The Door by Magda Szabo. Again, this is not historical fiction. Um, so this book is about a relationship between two characters. We've got on the one hand uh, the narrator, who is a writer, uh, and she and her husband, they're looking for someone to look after their house because they don't have the time to do all the chores and they end up uh, for that hiring Emerence who is kind of the concierge of the building that they moved into and th so this book is about the relationship between Emerence and the narrator. Emerence is a wonderful character, she's this old lady with an enormous stamina with very strict rules that she applies to people and that she applies to her life and you need to follow in what she has decided is the way to be otherwise you're not going to match with her. The relationship is wonderful, the book is very well written, it starts with the narrator saying I killed Emerence and you kind of follow this whole story, their whole relationship through decades. Uh, very good book, very smart, completely sucked in, uh, yeah, highly recommend it as well. Then we're moving a little bit more artwork, still in Europe though, and we're going to Norway, for which I have read, and this is one of the books I haven't talked about before, um, this book. Uh, in Dutch, so it's translated from Norwegian, I read it in Dutch for which the name is Haiekort, which would translate it to shark fever, but the English name is shark drunk and the writer is Morten A. Stroxnus. So this is non-fiction and it's about two people, the writer Morten and his friend Hugo. And they have decided that they want to fish a Greenland shark. A Greenland shark is a big nasty beast that attacks a fishing boats sometimes and its meat is poisonous so there isn't a big fishing culture around these sharks. Um, and they do this in the Lofoten, in, in the north of Norway, on a beautiful, beautiful uh, set of islands. So yeah, and this book is about that. There isn't a very strong narrative, narrative, uh, but you do get... It's very dense when it comes to other information. So we get a lot of information about 
the history of different kinds of fishing in Norway. We've got a lot of descriptions of a lot of deep sea creatures. Those are the parts that I found most interesting when he was talking about some kind of sea creature that was mind-boggling things about, about octopus and stuff. And a lot of random information on how people in the Lofoten Island uh, live. I don't think this book was for me. Um, because the narrative itself and the story of them fishing, it's... fishing? Fishing is a very calm sport, you have to be very patient and, and because of that it's not really something that I gravitate towards and I had a little bit of trouble with that in this book. I thought, as I said, the parts, the information about the deep sea creatures, very interesting, but all the other types of information, I didn't really always see what the... what bound them all together, it felt like the the writer was just, well, he was waiting for a fish and he had a book and he read the book and that has this little piece of information and he shared that with us. Uh, but I think that if you like real life adventures, adventures in the type of let's go hunt this creature, then you will really like this book, uh, also because of all the information that is in it. Shark fever. Let's go somewhere else. Um, so we were in Europe and we are going to go towards Asia because the three other books that I have read are all set in Asia. And we're going to start with Laos. Um, so for that I read the book Rummy to Earth by Paul Yoon. It's kind of a disconstructed book in the sense that it doesn't have a very fixed chronological narrative. Um, it starts in the 1960s, around the time that there is a lot of war in that region, and we have three kids who work for a kind of field hospital, and on motorbikes they are sent out of the hospital to look for patients, to look for medication, etc, etc. And um, there are a lot of bombs, and it's a very dangerous place to live, and uh, these children don't have parents anymore, and the people from the hospital, when they themselves are extracted from that place, they decided to save the kids as well. And that is when the paths of these three children kind of separate. And throughout the book, you kind of hear what happens to them. The writing, especially in the beginning of the book, was wonderful. Somehow this book, it felt it was, for my personal taste, it was a little bit too deconstructed. And we follow other two other characters than just the three kids and I wasn't expecting that so that also kind of threw me off uh, so if you are interested in this because it did give me a sense of Laos and what the wars that were in Vietnam and uh, in surrounding countries how that also affected Laos uh, I did not know that um, so yeah it's still an interesting book but be aware that it's a little bit deconstructed then we are going to go to Japan we're still in the same kind of time period, but a little bit earlier. So this is set in the Second World War. And I'm going to talk about No Surrender by Hiro Oroda. Again, this is a nonfiction, just like a Shark Drunk. So this is the story of Hiro Oroda, who is a Japanese soldier who in the Second World War is set, sent to a island in the Philippines. And when the war is over, he does not believe that. And him and three other soldiers kind of stay hidden on the island and they travel around the whole time because they don't want to get caught. I mean, the war is still going on and the island that they were on um, was taken over by the Americans. Um, so they stay hidden, they have to learn to survive uh, and they do that. Well, he especially does that because he stays the longest for 29 years and the book is about how he and his other companions stay alive and mostly about how it's possible that even though he got all of these messages, uh, pamphlets, uh, radio, books, family of his coming to there to say, the war is over, get out, how, in that his head, he kept, he kept believing that the war was still a thing. It's a fascinating book, there are some slow parts, but it really gave me and it will give you, if you decide to read it, a sense of the Japanese pride. And that was very cool, how the fact, the basis of the, the basis of why he thinks that the war is still going on is that he believes the Japanese can't lose, and if there are still Japanese alive, that means that the war is still going on. That's the basis of his thinking. Very, very interesting. And last but not least, on fiction from North Korea and this is The Invitation Only Zone and it has been written by Robert S. Boyton. Um, I say from North Korea, not really because this writer is American and it's about 
an episode in history that I had no idea, and that is that in the 70s and 80s, the North Koreans were stealing Japanese, were abducting Japanese from uh, the Japanese islands and bringing them to North Korea. And this was done, we don't really know how many people were abducted. It can be anywhere between 13 and 250 people. Um, and this book talks about that. It talks about how the people were abducted, what their lives were, because they were sent to these invitation-only zones, so they were kind of still separate from regular North Koreans. Um, so it talks about their lives over there. It talks about the relationship between North Korea and Japan, which that is was to me the most interesting thing. And there, not only Japanese were abducted, but also people from other countries. And so this book talks about everything surrounding that. We learned uh, some things about the history of North Korea from the point onwards of them being separated from South Korea, uh, which I did not know anything about, so always happy for any type of information. I feel like when I'm reading these books, I'm just, oh, yes, tell me things. I'm just so happy to learn. <laughs> That's so weird somehow. Uh, but this was very interesting, but at least the subject, very interesting, but the writing, not so much. Robert S. Boyton is a journalist, so I kind of had expected this book to be okay, at least, but I don't know, I was, I'm someone that gets sucked into books pretty easily, and in this one there were whole periods where I was, wait, wait, I have no idea what just happened, what he was talking about, I need to go back. There were so many paragraphs that I did just, I just did not understand and I needed to read twice because I just didn't understand what was said. The way it's structured as well, it's I haven't figured out how it's structured yet. It's not chronological. It's not that we do one subject and then another subject. It kind of goes all over the place. And all of the things are interesting, but especially when you're talking about big set of people, and then even more for me, uh, because the names, obviously, we had Korean names and Japanese names, and because they're not names and sounds that I'm used to, it, it takes even more effort to separate them and to know, okay, that was this person, that was that person. But I was so confused at so many things that were happening and I, we, you would learn about one subject and people that were doing things for a certain kind of event or whatever, and then you would just kind of leave those people and a hundred pages later, sometimes they would reappear. And it just didn't make sense. So very, very, very interesting subject. Um, very interesting setting, etc. Very important also, I believe, to know about because one of the things that it talks about at the beginning is why Japan and how Japan became a colonizing power. Uh, that they kind of did that because they saw all the West big Western powers had colonies. So then Japan just thought, oh, we need colonies, and then kind of started attacking the rest of Asia. I mean, and it also had talk about race and very, very interesting. But again, not linked to the rest of the book, I felt. Um, so yeah, that was too bad. So I'm kind of conflicted about this book. If you are someone that really... If you're very interested in the subject matter and that is what counts when you read, then I would definitely read this because it's very interesting, but I've said that already. But if writing style and lack of structure is something that you are sensitive to, I would stay clear of this one. Um, so yeah, as always, talk to me in the comments if you've read any of this book or if you have recommendations or if you've read something from these countries uh, that is not what I was talking about. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!